In this video, we're going to talk about how to overcome codependency. And I'm going to share with you three in-depth tips on how to stop being codependent. Time to break free of codependency. Hi, I'm Simona, certified life coach and author of the book 111 Ways to Simplify Your Life. I upload educational videos on personal development. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it to get notified when I upload a new video. Now, before we get into my tips on how to overcome codependency, let's first define what codependency means and where it actually comes from. Being codependent means having an excessive emotional or psychological reliance on someone else. In many cases, it may be related to an illness or addiction. But in today's video, we will mainly focus on the emotional aspect of codependency. Let's say you're a healthy, mature individual who struggles with meeting their own emotional needs. So you seek external validation from others, have an excessive need for attention, or don't like spending time by yourself. That was me for 25 years. I entered codependent relationships with men and felt so completely immersed in their worlds that I completely forgot how to function on my own. I've also worked with many women who were highly functional in other aspects of their lives. Some of them were also extremely successful, but the pattern was obvious. There was something deeper going on. So that got me thinking, why do we actually become codependent? To answer that question, we'll briefly talk about attachment theory. According to this theory in developmental psychology, humans are born with a need to form a close emotional bond with a caregiver. Psychologist Mary Ainsworth concluded that there were three major styles of attachment. The first one is secure attachment, and the other two types are different variations of insecure attachment, anxious and avoidant. Now let's examine each one of them. Securely attached people generally approach intimate relationships in a healthier way than the anxious and avoidant type, because they had a secure and loving relationship with their primary caretakers. Anxiously attached people feel nervous around their partner. They're constantly on the lookout for drama and need a lot of affection and validation. They struggle to be alone and are prone to feeling jealous, overly sensitive, or obsessed with their partners. Codependent people generally fall into this category. Now let's talk a little bit about avoidantly attached people. They're self-sufficient, independent, dislike true intimacy, and tend to push away their partners when they get too close. They have commitment issues and would rather focus on their work, passions or personal projects than spend time with their partners. Anxious and avoidant types getting together is a common pattern because they're feeding off of their insecurities and creating a toxic push-pull dynamic. The only way for such a relationship to survive and even thrive is for the anxious type to become more self-sufficient and work on their abandonment issues and the avoidant type to open up, show vulnerability and work on their intimacy issues. Fear of abandonment is something that requires a lot of deep inner work, but it's something that I've helped many of my clients overcome. So if you're interested in learning more, make sure to sign up for the waitlist for my signature program. Enrollment is currently closed, but it will open in a few months. So make sure to head over to coachsimona.com waitlist. Now that we know what codependency means and where it actually comes from, Let's hop into my first tip on how to stop being codependent. Get to know yourself better. Although this may sound like general advice, I'm not just gonna say, get to know yourself better and leave you hanging. Instead, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Step number one in getting to know yourself better is to learn what your core values are. Your core values are a set of principles that guide you through life. The easiest way to define what your core values are is to answer one simple question. What are the three most important things in my life right now? Here are a few examples. Love, freedom, happiness, health, family, money, etc. I've made a free downloadable cheat sheet with the top 98 values to choose from. So make sure to go to bit.ly slash 98 values. So how is knowing your core values related to getting yourself better? It's very simple. When you know what's important to you, you can connect with yourself on a deeper level. Part of the reason you're codependent right now is that you don't have a healthy sense of self. But by the end of this video, you will know exactly what steps to take to begin your self-discovery journey. Step number two in getting to know yourself better is remembering who you were before everyone else told you who you should be. 
not many people know this, but I actually wrote my book 111 Ways to Simplify Your Life because I felt overwhelmed, exhausted, and I wanted to find joy in the simple things in life again. So I started looking. And funnily enough, I found that everything that I was searching for was already there. That's exactly what I mean by remembering who you were before everyone else told you who you should be. Here are some introspective questions you can ask yourself to reflect on that. Number one, what did I enjoy doing as a child? Two, if money wasn't a problem, what would I be doing with my life right now? Three, what are my five strongest qualities? Four, what are the top three things that I like to do in my free time? Five, what would the perfect day look like for me? This will help you block out all the external media noise, societal pressure and parental expectations and help you tune into your true feelings and desires. Step number three on how to get to know yourself better is to become comfortable with sitting in silence. One of the reasons you're struggling with codependency is you have an overactive mind, which means you're constantly flooded with thoughts and you've probably resorted to different coping mechanisms to alleviate the pain of having to sit with yourself and face your feelings. So here comes my second free download for you, the Automatic Thought Record Tool. It's a cognitive behavioral therapy tool that I use with my clients. It helps you track the link between your thoughts, emotions and behaviors. It's super easy to use and you can download your free copy at bit.ly slash thought record tool. Now you may be wondering, what does the automatic thought record tool have to do with sitting in silence? When you become aware of the most repetitive negative thoughts you have on a daily basis, the emotions you feel as a result of them, and the unhelpful codependence behaviors you engage in, you will feel more comfortable to stay with your thoughts. Another way to practice sitting in silence is to try out meditation or mindfulness techniques. I won't get into more details in this video because I've already created an entire playlist with podcast episodes specifically focused on meditation, mindfulness and overcoming anxiety. So I will leave it in the cards and in the description box below. Now let's recap tip number one before we move on to tip number two. What you've learned so far is that getting to know yourself better is a three-part process. First, you define your core values. Second. You remember who you were before everyone else told you who you should be. And last but not least, you become comfortable with sitting in silence. If you want to learn even more ways on how to get to know yourself better, watch my video on how to build unshakable confidence after this one. I will leave a link below. My second tip on how to overcome codependency is to focus on yourself. As someone who struggled with codependency almost their entire life, I can tell you from personal experience that focusing on myself wasn't easy. When you're used to paying more attention to your partner, your family or your friends, it can be pretty scary to take a good look at yourself and become comfortable with every aspect of your personality. So how do you begin to focus on yourself? One of the things that I would recommend first is to spend an entire day without technology. I know that taking a day off from social media and consuming content can be a little bit challenging especially right now where many of us are stuck at home and have more time on our hands. If an entire day sounds a bit extreme, you can always try it out for a couple of hours and see how it feels. By doing that, you will be able to tune into your feelings, see what's really going on inside and be able to reconnect with yourself. Another thing you can do to focus on yourself is to do something kind for yourself every day. Codependent people rarely think about themselves because they're too preoccupied with what everybody else is doing. You may find yourself constantly worrying about someone close to you or making excuses why someone else's needs are more important than yours. So I want you to do at least one kind thing for you every day. Make it a priority. This will not only help you detach from others, but it will also shift the focus back on the person that you're going to spend 100% of the rest of your life with. You. And my last suggestion for focusing on yourself is to take radical responsibility for your life. While you may be taking a lot of responsibility for what everyone else around you thinks or wants, as someone who's trying to break free of codependency, you may be too dependent on them for other things – emotional support, affection, attention, etc. By taking radical responsibility for your life, you will be able to say, okay, Here's what's not going well in my life. Now how do I fix it? It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to feel lost or overwhelmed. But you need to be honest with yourself. Is this really because of someone else 
Or is it because of your own choices? Or is it because you're trying to run away from your problems? If that's the case, listen to episode 99 from the Simplify Your Life podcast after watching this video. I will leave a link below. Now let's recap tip number two on how to stop being codependent. Focus on yourself by doing the following. Step number one, spend an entire day without technology. Two, do something kind for yourself every day. And three, take radical responsibility for your life. Now let's move on to tip number three, which is to set healthy boundaries. Now, setting healthy boundaries is essential for overcoming codependency and is something that you're probably not doing right now. Think of codependency as you and the people in your life and mesh together without having a good idea of where you end and the other person starts. I'm gonna be honest with you. Setting healthy boundaries is a process that's gonna take a while, but let me show you how to start. Step number one is to learn how to say no without feeling guilty. As a codependent person, you may find yourself constantly people-pleasing and trying to say the right thing so you don't offend anyone. The truth is that by saying no to people, you will start separating yourself from others. Setting boundaries is the only way to have truly healthy relationships. If you want to dive deeper into this topic and see real-life examples, watch my video on how to say no without feeling guilty after this one. I will also leave a link below. Step number two on setting healthy boundaries is to express your feelings. As a codependent person, you may have trouble communicating your feelings or sometimes think that your feelings don't matter. You may even prioritize your partner's feelings over your own. I know I did that for a very long time. So how do you express your feelings in a healthy and constructive way? By starting your sentences with I. For example, next time you want to share your feelings with someone you love, say I feel instead of you make me feel. Trust me, it will make a lot of difference. And the last step in setting healthy boundaries is to show your most authentic self to the world. What do I mean by this? When we're acting codependent, we're not really being our most authentic, healthy adult self. We're using our relationships as a shield to feel secure because we felt insecure a long, long time ago. The truth is we're already secure. We're already capable. We're already self-sufficient. We're not children anymore and we can take good care of ourselves. We're ruminating on things that happened in our childhood and trying to fix things that are already in the past. At some point, we need to realize that we are already enough. We are capable of taking care of our own emotional needs. And we're the most beautiful, vibrant and happy when we show our authentic selves to the world. That's one of the many things I teach in my signature online program for women. And moment opens in a few months, and I'm so excited to guide you through the entire transformation of building unshakable self-confidence and taking your power back. So make sure to sign up for the waitlist at corsimonocom slash waitlist. Now let's recap how to set healthy boundaries. Step number one is to learn how to say no without feeling guilty. Step number two is to express your feelings. And step number three is to show up as your most authentic self to the world. So far in this video, we talked about how to overcome codependency and stop being codependent. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because in the next video, we're going to talk about how to stop obsessive thoughts. And I will share with you my best tips on how to master your mindset. In the meantime, make sure to check out these two videos 